Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled My HOA Experience. I am 41 male, at an inexperienced age of 25 years and a bachelor I grew tired of living in a low rent apartment, surrounded by less than lawful individuals and decided that a mortgage at the time would be only a little more per month and would make a great investment. Oh, to go back in time and give myself a talk because what I learned was that living in an HOA only makes you a glorified renter, at the end of the day you own nothing. The condo I purchased was very nice, 1300 square feet, 3 bedrooms, 2 bathrooms, vaulted ceilings, thick walls, I was pretty impressed with myself. Unfortunately, the HOA was not well managed. The board was nothing more than puppets for the management company, who might as well been the landlord. It was a large HOA, 26 buildings with 12 units each. I learned in comparison to friends that this was a good thing, as it meant assessment fees were more spread out. When I moved in, I didn't know about assessment fees and I was barely educated on the HOA fees. One of the selling points was the low HOA fee, only $80 a month. But later I found out the developer who was still finishing the last four buildings supplemented the fee to keep it low so he could sell more units. I also didn't know that my HOA was a sub-HOA, which means it was an HOA inside an HOA. And guys, that is what I would call HOA inception. Anyway, so I had to pay the master HOA another 25 bucks a month to do nothing at all, literally nothing but the privilege of living in an HOA that was part of a collection of other HOAs. The sub-HOAs did all the internal maintenance and the city itself took care of the HOA communal areas like the public roads. Meanwhile, my sub-HOA board was full of out-of-state Southern Californians in a snow-heavy state. My first year there, they budgeted $2,000 for snow removal and $45,000 for beautification. New wood chips and remodeling the clubhouse. Meanwhile, the snow removal fee came to $35,000. At the HOA meeting to vote on how to pay the $35,000 snow fee, they banned anyone from talking about how we got into that mess and anyone who did was arrested for disorderly conduct by the police standing by, on request of the management company. Eventually they voted on an assessment fee which came to 35-ish for each unit. Later I learned the plow company was owned by the management company's owner's relative. That plow guy came out if there was a barely visible frost on the ground and charged us $100 per push, every time he backed up and drove forward. Eventually the HOA board was replaced and they replaced the management company with a new company. The new company liked to play with the pool keys and charge you to turn them back on. They always tried to claim your card was red at the pool during an unauthorized time or that card you were using was a fake one that they didn't issue. The 2008 recession hit without selling the last of the units. The developer backed out of supplementing the fees and the fee jumped $65 and $10 the next year. Probably even higher, but I moved out. The developer screwed up and didn't have room to give the last building or so their two parking spots, one covered, so now the HOA wanted to revoke every one second spot. The problem is, the second spot was on my mortgage and bylaws provided for a second spot. The HOA dropped the revoked spot idea, but I don't know how they eventually solved it. Last, I overpaid my HOA every month for dues, placing me several hundred over as insurance against the next assessment fee. So I paid a little amount for the HOA to install a screen on my dryer vent to keep the birds out against my credit. I also paid for several upgrades inside to sell the place. Unfortunately, when I tried to sell, the recession was at its worst and I sold at a loss to get out of there and buy a house. The last insult of this HOA was to claim I never paid for the screen on my dryer vent and that I owed a few hundred in back HOA fees. 
If I didn't pay, they would place a lien on me which would mess with the condo I sold and the house I was buying. So I paid the ransom and walked away from that dumpster fire. The good news is the house I bought was not an HOA property and has tripled in value. I do know the master HOA was eventually sued by all the sub HOAs and dissolved because they did nothing but rent an office down the street. I have also ran into people who still own in my old sub HOA and yes, the fee is now much higher. And guys, I would not be surprised if there would be some sort of real criminal organization, maybe the mafia, behind that particular HOA. Jesus Christ. And please, I beg you, if you have any HOA stories of your own, please feel free to share them on r slash ripe stories on Reddit or you can go to my YouTube channel to the about page and there you will find my business email and you can send me a story via email. Anyway, the next one starts like this. I lived next door to an old man that would come over to have a good conversation with my parents every Saturday morning over coffee he kept up the house by himself fairly well since his wife had passed years before. Pretty soon he moved on and the house was put up for sale but was soon bought by this family of four and an uncle we had assumed. From what I remember, it was a man, woman, their kids and the man's brother. Everything was okay at first, they moved in, things were quiet, introduced themselves once and then the party started. And they didn't stop till 5 in the morning most nights, this happened from Friday all the way to Sunday. Being young and my parents having me and my brother in bed by midnight on weekends, this was a big problem. So of course they were extremely frustrated and so was everyone else around that house. Cops were called continuously throughout the weekend, this happened for years. Then they finally built this large garage behind the house. I assumed they moved the parties into that garage because the loud music was now muffled with bass. Finally around 2003 or 4, one day out of the blue, the police raided the house. Not sure for what immediately, but I remember my dad asking and finally got an answer. Dog fighting and drug trafficking was that house's main income I am assuming this was the real purpose for the garage they had built. Around 2005 the violence in the neighborhood got pretty serious and my parents finally had enough with the area so they decided to move. I miss that old man, I know that wouldn't have stopped the change of the neighborhood but I think it would have made it a lot easier on my parents and everyone else in that neighborhood. And guys if you have watched until here please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments if you enjoy my content and want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one starts like this. My current neighbors are terrible. It is an Indian couple that fight constantly. I have had to go over to their house and ask them to stop because they are loud enough. I can hear them in my house. When they are not fighting, they are loudly having intercourse in their backyard. And I get it, it is their yard, they can do what they want, but loudly screaming, harder harder, it is not okay to do outside when other people can hear you. I have kids and now I have to keep a window open because of their behavior. The woman saw my daughter at the neighborhood mailboxes and told her that my wife was a SLUT and other nasty names. I complained to my HOA who I am sure advised them to knock it off. About two weeks after I complained the police came to my house and said they had received information that I was dealing cocaine. To top it off a large section of the fence between our properties is falling over due to a tree on their side of the fence having a branch growing into it. They refused to cut the branch and also refused to help pay to repair the fence. It has gone on like this for almost a year. I am moving in six weeks. HOA unfairly fines my aunt for not shoveling her sidewalk. Since it is winter in the northern hemisphere and we are getting our fair share of snow, I have a story from my aunt. My aunt lives in a gated community in the PNW, she is at a higher altitude so she gets a bit of snow. By the way guys, just to quickly chime in, how much snow have you gotten in 2019? I can basically count the days we have gotten snow on one hand. But anyway, she is a nice lady, very active and always helps other people. Her HOA is a drinking club as she describes them have a whole bunch of rules, some totally ridiculous, heavily enforced and always changing. Usually when rules are changed, they get posted on some online community bulletin board from the days of dial up. Also, they like to fine and shame people. My aunt never attended meetings because she has no time for drinking and cigarettes. 
As per usual, with a lot of by laws, you have to clear the sidewalk in front of your house of snow and ice. My aunt being the woman she is and living in a 55 plus community, she always shovels her walk and salts it for ice. A couple years ago, there was a heavier than usual snowfall, maybe over 20 inches in the higher elevations with some warm days, then freezing temperatures for a few days after. So, first snowfall she gets up early and shovels her sidewalk and her walk and sprinkles down some salt. It snows a few inches more, so in the later afternoon she shovels the walk again and decides to salt again. She literally said she tossed a few handfuls of salt and the neighbor across the street comes running out demanding she stop salting and it is a violation of HOA rule whatever crap. It seems that a no salt rule was added to their book of great HOA rules, reasoning is that salt crystals are unsightly and posted on the unusable online bulletin board from 1999. Which at this point, the online bulletin board had been replaced by an under maintenance error page for the past few months. So there was no way the drunken HOA rule changes could be relayed to the commoners. Well, my aunt apologizes, gets a warning for the first time she salted and a second for the handful of salt she applied in the second salting and then gets another warning for not properly clearing the sidewalk. Well, my aunt left maybe a strip about 2 to 3 inches for about 2 feet on the edge of her sidewalk, which was not properly cleared of snow. Not a big deal, she made an excellent effort, but the HOA neighbor didn't think so, next violation would be a fine. Also, she had to clean up all the rock salt with a broom. My aunt ended up getting the new HOA rules in writing from the HOA neighbor which she read over and realized they only stated salt in the sidewalk snow shoveling rule but nothing that blue salt free ice melt. Also was stated that the sidewalk should stay free of ice at all times. Also, she read a bit deeper to learn that street and sidewalk cleaning is covered by the HOA twice a year or as needed. Instead of risking HOA wrath of fines and some public shaming, because now it is near impossible to prevent the sidewalk from freezing up, she decides she will challenge the vodka-induced reasoning of the HOA and will use the blue non-salt ice melt to keep her sidewalk ice-free. The next day, after an overnight snowfall, she heads to the local hardware store to buy some blue non-salt ice melt, strikes up a conversation with the shop owner about her issue who recommends these blue ice melting pellets and throws in a bag of clay kitty litter on the house so she can stick it to them idiots. That afternoon, the temp rises just above freezing and there is a heavy wet snowfall of a few inches which hits the ground wet melts and refreezes when temperatures go below freezing at night time. So instead of risking having a skating rink for a sidewalk, she clears the wet snow and then dumps a bunch of these blue ice melting pellets and a whole bunch of kitty litter. Overnight it freezes, next day she has the most ice free sidewalk in all of the neighborhood and it is covered in ice melt pellets. Well, it rains that day, her use of kitty litter and blue ice melt pellets don't go unnoticed by HOA neighbor, that afternoon she is fined by the HOA officer in charge of fines for breaking rule, vodka section, stale cigarette smoke. She sees nothing wrong, the road is salted and sanded and looks like a mess, so her sidewalk does not look too bad all blue and grey speckled and ice free. Then she gets a notice to clean up the salt, which she ignores because it is not salt she's using to de-ice her sidewalk, but blue salt-free ice melt pellets and clay kitty litter. Then that day it rained, then froze and continued to rain, then snow causing everything to be covered in ice and snow the next morning. It was a disaster, my aunt cleared the snow from her sidewalk and applied more blue pellets and kitty litter, which was not a test because luckily she already had applied so much that there was already no ice on her sidewalk or snow. Everyone else in the neighborhood had to chip the underlayer of ice after they risked a horrific fall while clearing the top layer of snow. 
She then was fined again, while neighbors had to actually walk in the messy street in some parts because sidewalks in some spots were unwalkable. Warnings and fines were given to other unsuspecting neighbors who could not attend the HOA booth meetings and had mistakenly used salt or had not chipped and cleared all the sidewalk ice in an acceptable amount of time. The next few days were blue skies and below freezing with ice everywhere, sidewalks had been chipped but iced up over time with a thin layer of slick ice called black ice. People were falling and my aunt now had a couple rogue neighbors using all types of non-salt ice melt. One guy made a solution of brine and molasses, which he sprayed on and got great results. Others used sand, brine, non-salt ice melters and even 15 gallons of wine, which turned to vinegar, was applied. The HOA's alcohol consumption probably increased as the officer fell on a patch of black ice out front of his home, breaking his elbow while returning from delivering fines, warnings and general nastiness. Eventually, the weather returned to above freezing levels and rain, which washed away all the various ice melting substances. The rogue neighbors gathered at my aunt's house, enjoying tea and snacks. Amongst them was the man who used brine and molasses, who happened to have a license to practice law and was retired with nothing else better to do than to ruin drunk useless HOA at the next meeting. He then invited himself to the next meeting with a file folder of all the fines and warnings with a statement of dispute for each one. Also brought his tablet to prove the online bulletin board was not working, which helped the case that the HOA was not providing proper means of communication to the residents, which meant the residents could sign a petition to fire the standing HOA members and appoint an interim HOA till the election. My aunt was appointed treasurer, found the previous regime, spent HOA funds at the liquor store, the retired lawyer president who then went after the previous HOA for funds, spent on booze, and of course, they lived happily ever after. The next one is titled, HOA does not seem to learn. To start, this is a story about the aunt of a friend of mine, I've been to her home and seen the mess that seems to come out of this, as it is an amusing situation. I did get permission to post this though. For the backstory, the aunt and her husband inherited the house right after they had married from her husband's grandfather who had died before the wedding then they moved in, I believe in the early 70s. It was a large farm that her husband used for horses with the larger fields being rented off to a neighboring farm for use and handling the hay fields for them. They got a small amount of money from it and hay for the horses that they did not need to get together. Two things happened that led to the next step. The neighboring farm went out of business, one of the owners had a stroke and they moved to Florida, closing it for a retirement. And the aunt's husband died of cancer. At the same time, there were businesses and more moving nearby, so she was not that surprised when a developer approached her to try buying the property. She did not entirely end up selling, but sold most of it and getting a deal that reduced what she would get for it, but gave some pretty good perks. The first was the basics that they would get the sewage and other utilities and roads hooked up. At the time they had a septic system and well water, she still has well water because those rights remained with her, but the big thing was that she would have free access to any shared slash common areas and assets the community would have with their planned HOA stuff namely the parks and pools along with the golf course they had planned perpetually. The HOA would have no control over her property and she would have a non-voting advisory position on the board. He has not really bothered other than to pop up when they attempt to give her violations. Those agreements would also pass on to her heirs if it was inherited or to those she sold it to. If she was foreclosed on, the HOA could buy the property and bring it in if they wanted, but that was not something that ever happened as of yet. She is still there now. That was part of the contract and it was not until after the developers left and turned the HOA over to the residents that issues started. Though that was a couple years later. My friend and his sister moved in with their aunts for a while due to one parent being military and the other being a nurse on a two days off to one day on schedule. Their mother moved in with the aunt as well, but that schedule was not one they saw her all that often. 
and the sister was obsessed with the plastic flamingos they had seen on a vacation, so the aunt bought a couple and put them in one of her gardens. And three days later, the HOA decided to send her a violation for it, thus starting the mess that the aunt seems to enjoy egging on. They have no rights to force the issue and cannot really do anything to her. She likes to make their disagreements and pushes buttons. Last I visited, there were a few hundred flamingos and a veritable army of lawn gnomes surrounding the house with a barn, a workshop and a garage on an island-like hill in the center of what looks like a cookie cutter subdivision. But it seems like part of the HOA is in on the joke and whenever there is a new election, someone gets the bright idea to try enforcing the rules only for more things to pop up. And Ripe stars, unfortunately we have already reached the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content. However, if you cannot wait for more Ripe content, then I suggest you head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where you can find more exclusive Reddit content read by me. Patreon subscriptions start at just $1 per month and for $1 your name will show up at the end of each of my new videos. However, if you are willing to spend $3 per month, you will get access to more than 50 exclusive Reddit videos, mostly just no mother-in-law stories. However, please understand I don't want to pressure anyone into spending money because I am already incredibly grateful that you watch my videos every single day. Thank you so much for your daily support, it really means the world to me and I hope to see you again tomorrow for the next video.